first two questions will go to um, Anthony Dasher, followed by Alan Mastrangelo. Good morning, Coach. I know um, the other day when we spoke to you, you uh, when asked about you know where you know where uh, Anthony might might go. You, you said you hope that his head coach and, and the staff would would be somebody who would be able to nurture him through the process. Now you know it's Minnesota. What do you think about Coach Saunders and his staff as far as that is concerned? My fault, my fault, Anthony, I was muted. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I'm sorry. Uh, I feel great about it. I, I, I think it worked out remarkably well because Ryan is progressive. He's aggressive. He's a, he's a relationship builder. I've known Ryan for a long time. Uh, I coached against him uh, when he played at Minnesota. Certainly, I've, I've gotten to know him over the years. I have tremendous respect for him. I know in the initial meeting that Anthony had uh, with Ryan that he was excited about that, going back to when they first met, I believe, in Atlanta. So Ryan is a hands-on guy. I mean, and I think that's exactly what he needs. He needs somebody that is going to uh, be invested in the relationship a lot more than just touch and go, right? You know, and what happens so many times is you see a player, you know, you give them a couple of things, you move on your way. Anthony needs more than that. And I think that staff, I know Coach Gates, I think he's going to do a fantastic job. Um, Scott Layden, I talked to during this process. Joe Branch, I've known for a while and, and actually text with Joe last night. I think those kind of people will be outstanding for him. Ryan and I have exchanged text messages and phone messages, and then uh, hopefully I'll talk to him uh, at some point here later today. But I think it worked out great for having somebody that will have a lot of energy. Uh, a lot of empathy and somebody that, that Anthony will truly connect with. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Hey coach, have you had a chance to, to talk to Anthony and what, what would your advice be to him just as a first year NBA, you know, rookie? Well, we did. We spoke last night. We spoke last night uh, uh, shortly, uh, right after the draft, right after he was picked uh, in the midst of some of the media and that's such a night for him and his family uh, that um, we'd had a quick text when he first got picked and then we had a chance to visit. My advice for him would be the same thing uh, for the fans of Minnesota. You've got to be patient. He's a very aggressive, get after it, being in the gym guy who wants success right now. And I think that's a good thing. But at the same time, there's going to be a huge learning curve in the sense that he has not competed in a basketball game in over eight months. And he didn't have, obviously all the rookies are in the same boat, but he didn't have a summer uh, of summer league. He didn't have a summer to train with the coaches. He hasn't had a fall of uh, being at the workouts from September 1st on, you know, that in any normal year, that's what they would be getting. So it's going to take a little bit of time. And I think though his, his drive, his determination, uh, his willingness to work, uh, his ability to pick things up, those are all going to be big things. But the bottom line and this is what I said to him and that I would say to him every time, keep remembering what kind of great teammate you are and how important it is for you as a teammate to see your teammates have success and, and keep working with that. Do everything you can do every day to make your teammates better. And I think when you have something, when you have that kind of mindset, you can't help but succeed. And I think that's what's going to be most important for him throughout the rookie year because there will be ups and downs, no doubt about it. But to keep learning, keep progressing, but going every day saying, how can I make sure my teammates have a really good practice? And how can I make sure that my teammates have a really good game? And when you have that mindset, uh, it's amazing how it comes back to you and you have your own personal successes. We'll next go up to Minneapolis for uh, Jace Frederick with the Pioneer Press, followed by Dave Campbell with the Associated Press. Hey, Tom, thanks for doing this. Uh, some people have questioned, you know, Anthony, does he love basketball? Is he committed? You know, but you've described him as the team's best screener by the end of the year, a great teammate, a great worker. That sounds like somebody who's really committed to the game and loves the game. Um, has that been really your entire experience with him? Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think the whole thing and, and, I, and the, the love of basketball, does he love sitting there watching it for three, four hours at a time? Probably not. And I think you'd be surprised how few of kids really do. Now, playing it for three or four hours at a time, that is for sure, right? So I'd much rather have a guy that wants to be in the gym working 
And, and, and he learned a lot about watching film. I, I saw this in some of his comments last night and uh, that, that he learned about the value of film. And remember now, the, these people that are, that are this age, they're growing up constantly on Insta stories, YouTube, uh, quick hit videos, right? They're not, they're not sitting there for hour upon hour watching game after game. They're watching snippets. They're watching bites. I have, I have kids. I mean, it's the same way. And so the bottom line is, if he didn't have the desire to be in the gym and he didn't have the work capacity that he has, I'd be concerned. That's not him at all. I mean, he is a worker. Uh, he's a guy that, that, that needs to be in the gym. He just doesn't want to be in the gym. He needs to be in the gym. And 20 years as a head coach, I've never had a guy that spent more time after games in the gym than he did. Now, I've had guys spend a lot of time in the gym. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm talking about after games, at home games. Going out there after everything was done, maybe the, the media stuff was done, everything's done. He might have 10, 15 people waiting on him, right? But he continued. If he was set on working, he works. And I think that's, uh, uh, that's the big thing you're going to get with him. He, there's a commitment to getting better. And I think he'll do the same in Minnesota. Hey, hey, Tom, thanks for doing this. Um, yep. Just building off that a little bit, um, Anthony sort of came across last night as pretty self-aware just about, um, you know, some of the criticism that he's heard, but how the Timberwolves really presented to him a vision of, of what he can become, I, knowing that he's been through a lot in his life. I, you only had him one season, but he's 19 years old. I, what, what did you see just from his kind of awareness about um, – his career and, and sort of his place and, and how, what it'll take to sort of be the best he can be. Well, first off, he's extremely bright. He's extremely bright. He, he, he's worldly. Uh, he's, he's, you're going to see that he's very good in conversations when you guys get him. And if you get him in one-on-one -on -one situations and things of that nature, he's easy to talk to, right? For somebody that was 18, uh, he'll surprise you. And, and now can he do, can he give sound bites and can he do interviews? Absolutely. But this is a, it, there, there's a deep process to him and he's been through a lot in his life. And as he builds up trust and as he builds up uh, belief that comes out. And so early on in his time here, probably about three weeks into his time uh, at Georgia, we had a long conversation because we knew it was going to be a process for him to learn the amount of work that goes into this, even in the summertime, the working with other guys, like there's nowhere to rest. Like when you're on the court or you're in the weight room, you're working. And, and, and the one thing I said to him, and I, and I think it stayed true through this whole thing, because it was different for me. I'd had one guy that had really come in predestined uh, in the sense of Cody Zeller. The rest of the guys that I'd had, guys like Dwayne Wade, Victor Aladipo, uh, Wesley Matthews, OG Ananobi, all those kind of guys, they were not predestined to be one of the top picks in the draft per se. And, and as I said to him, there will be more people trying to find reasons why you shouldn't be number one and why you're not worthy of being number one, then there will be people trying to find reasons that you are just because of the way you're coming in, just because of the accolades that he's coming in with. It's much easier to go after something that's at the top of the ladder than it is the people that are climbing their way up. I said, you've got to be a climber. Every day, you've got to continue to work and understand that you've got to hold yourself to a really, really high standard because people will be looking to pick it apart, not just build it up. I said, but in here, we're going to build it up every day. We're going to work together. And I said, that means that there'll be a lot of tough days that you've got to get through, that you've got to overcome. And for an 18-year-old that should have been a senior in high school and never been through anything like that, I think he handled it extremely well. And he became uh, an even better teammate than what I could have imagined, considering all those accolades. He, he said this last night, too. You know, he really learn to move without the basketball. He never had to move without the basketball. You know, he lived slot to slot and top of the key. And then he could get to the rim from there. I mean, he could get anything he wanted done on the basketball court during his high school days. And that just wasn't going to be the case anymore. And it's certainly not going to be the case now in the NBA. So that level of awareness, that level of, of uh, aptitude of looking at things, being able to learn, wanting to learn, all that is there, and he just needs people that are going to invest that time into him constantly. Because the last time he's been in a in a in a film session, 
uh, was March 12th. And then midway through, we found out we weren't playing anymore. So I know he's, I, obviously he's watched film, but I'm talking about in a team setting. So as long as that, as that happens and that time is spent with him, you're going to see him continue to grow and grow and flourish uh, and build onto that level of intelligence and build onto that awareness. We'll next go to Chip Towers, followed by Jacob Roth with Channel 46 in Atlanta. Tom, I, I just wonder if you can uh, quantify what this means for Georgia basketball in terms of uh, recruiting and stuff. And, and would you – will you continue to pursue players like Ant-Man that are sort of uh, predestined? Well, absolutely. I, I think you have to. I think anybody that says they wouldn't – is not telling the truth. I mean, you've got to try to make your team better uh, on the floor, in the classroom, in the meetings every day. Well, you've got to keep trying to do it in recruiting as well. And I think it means a ton. I mean, when you really look at it and say that the last time the highest pick was Dominique Wilkins at number three, 38 years ago, and that's just amazing. And, and to never had a number one pick. And, and um, I think it says a lot. I think it, it, it's going to say even more in the sense that if, if your dreams are real, uh, if your agenda is real, okay, and this is what you really want, and you want to come in and, and you want to help build a place up, uh, that it can happen here. And there's sometimes there's different agendas in recruiting. There's different things people want. And, and, but at the end of the day, if you want to get better, and if you want to be developed, and if you want a chance to play in a great university in front of a great fan base it's here and there's no one that can ever say again that your greatest dream couldn't be realized uh, at Georgia when it comes to being able to go on to the next level and um, I, I feel really good about that and we will continue to pursue in the state I'm having a couple of great conversations already this morning uh, with kids in this state hopefully they weren't interrupting their zoom classroom sessions too much but we still had those conversations and last night and, and it's all right here and you just have to be willing to put in the time and we've got to get, we've got to get enough guys that, that can make each other better on a continual basis so we can build some consistency into the program. Hey coach. So as one of those kind of predestined guys, you know, Anthony's obviously been the guy pretty much his whole basketball career. And I know obviously you shared the ball a lot last year with him at UGA but he said last night he doesn't really feel a lot of pressure playing with two all-stars. So what, what do you think about his game uh, he'll be able to kind of unlock playing alongside, you know, Carl Anthony Towns and D'Angelo Russell? Well, I think also when you add Ricky Rubio and the energy that he plays with and, and the passing ability, uh, Ricky is the epitome of the old quote, the ball finds energy. And, and I'm a huge, my, my son's favorite player, non-dad coach player, has always been Ricky Rubio. So we've followed him close for a long, long time. And I just love the way he moves the ball. I love his work ethic. I think that was one of the best moves of the entire night that anybody in the NBA made. So to me, I think that helps. I, I think Anthony will continue to learn what it means to move without the basketball. As we've said, he became our best screener at the end of the year because he loved to see his teammates get free. And I don't know how much screening you know ryan will do in the high post or things like that but anthony is a teammate i mean he's a teammate and there's not really a uh well i'll be a teammate in this i won't be a teammate in that he's not really like that you know this kid is a teammate he's he's, he's got an infectious personality people want to be around him does he have to grow up uh, absolutely does he have to work through mistakes absolutely does he have a lot to learn no question about it but he's 19 with a great heart tremendous empathy and loves being a teammate. So to me, those kind of things are really going to work well. And if Carl uh, will take him under his wing, and if D'Angelo, who I've known for a long, long time, will take him under his wing with, with some of the other guys that are in his life uh, it, it, that he has the capacity now to have in the NBA, it's going to work. But, but he needs to learn, like any 19-year-old would need to learn, what it truly means to be a professional, not just be a pro basketball player but what it means to be a professional. And that's the greatest hope that I have when it comes to the mentoring phase of what he gets from his teammates, because, because that's what he needs. And if that happens over the next couple of years, look out, you know, because there's so much there. He just needs to learn now what that game and what that life is all about. Well, no, back, next go back to Minneapolis for Darren Wolfson with KSTP TV, followed by 
John Krasinski with The Athletic. Okay. Tom, I appreciate you doing this as, as we sure. up here in the Twin Cities get to know Anthony in the, in the coming months and years. What, what will surprise us as we get to learn about Anthony? What will surprise us about Anthony? What will surprise you? That, you know, I, I think once people get to know him, I've said this, so it's no surprise to me, but I mean, just what kind of personality that he has, how good he is with people. Um, um, he's, he's reserved in a way. He's not the class clown. He's not trying to be the life of the party. Uh, he's funny naturally. He has a lot of fun. Um, but I think as his confidence grows as a player, I think you won't be surprised when you see him doing things that are not for the camera. Okay. You know, as well as I do in, in the professional level, uh, a lot of the good things that happen are followed by a camera crew or they're followed by somebody monitoring it and take it. And, and, and so they can put it on social media. I've seen Anthony do things. I've seen Anthony be with people because it's natural to him that no camera is involved in. And one of the great things about him, and we had numerous NBA people, not only at the games last year, but at practice. So it was, it was nothing to have two, maybe three GMs at a practice, have eight, nine, 10 different teams at a practice. I can't name one day that that ever faced him. There was not one day. Now there were days that we had to get him better or we had to work through things. I'm not saying that, but when it comes to, I ever had to worry about him trying to put on a show for an NBA GM or, or an NBA team that never happened. He's very, very confident in who he is. So I say that to say this, when, when he, he wants to help people, he's got a very, very good heart. And I think people will have an answer to your question over the next few years. You'll hear about stories about well, Anthony did this or Anthony said that, or Anthony did this for this family or Anthony did this at this restaurant. He just got to grow into that. And, 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 and he's got to be reminded of it. That's who he is. He's a great teammate with a great heart and it's got to come out all the time. Hey Tom, building off that just a little bit, uh, he, he spent a lot of time, you know, most of his life in Atlanta in the Georgia area. How do you see him acclimating to a new city to kind of just a, a different lifestyle? We've seen some prospects kind of, have difficulties making that adjustment others are seamless how do you see him kind of just changing the the environment around him that way well that'll be an adjustment I mean there's there's no doubt about it I lived in the midwest all my life and then when we left Indiana we moved to Florida and then a year later took the Georgia job and I'm in my 50s right I'm 54 it's a mate it's an adjustment so there's no question that that will be that way for him and and but as long as you know, my recommendation to him would be to live as close to the facility as he can be because he's going to spend time in the gym. Uh, he's going to spend time with his video games. You know, he's, he's, he's a guy, he's, he's very resourceful in that way. Um, I think he'll be fine with that. I think he'll be fine. I, I think now the way the season is going to play out, there's not going to be a lot of time to get acclimated other than to basketball, you know, with the season starting as quick as it's going to start. And I think that's a really – good thing for him in the sense of right now, this is what my job is. This is what I've got to do. And then the travel starts and all those types of things. And I think it'll be really good for him as he gets to know another part of the country, you know, and then really diving into what Minnesota is all about and, and getting to know the city and all those types of things. There'll be time for that. But right now it's much more important that he dive in to understand, man, this season's here quicker than I thought it would be. And I've got to be ready. We'll next go to Mike Griffith, followed by Mark Bradley for a question or an astute observation. Ah, um, so Dwayne Wade was talking last night about spending a couple hours watching film with you last season at some point, uh, looking at, uh, I guess he looked at Ant-Man. And then also he talked about uh, Anthony comparing himself to, to Dwayne, and, and Dwayne was flattered and, and pleased with that. But obviously you coached both guys. I mean, that's, it's the most obvious question out there comparing Anthony to Dwayne Wade, and then if you could just elaborate more on your time with Wade uh, breaking down film in Athens, uh, whenever that was he was yeah, talking about. I, I think, I think with Yeah, uh, I think with Dwayne, you know, Dwayne is a kind person. Dwayne's going in the Hall of Fame on the first ballot, probably unanimous, right? And so I think any time, uh, that's just Dwayne being Dwayne. But Dwayne has had a, a special interest in Anthony uh, for some time. There's no doubt about it, because his son Zaire uh, has known him for some time. They play in the 
Hango's camp together out in California or different AAU events. So Dwayne has been acclimated to that scene because of his son, because of Zaire. So uh, he was well aware. And then obviously when he comes with me, he's even that much more aware. But I don't think the comparisons are even remotely fair to either one of them. And so like what, what, because they both come up different ways. I mean, Dwayne had very few scholarship offers. Anthony was predestined from, you know, ninth grade, 10th grade on. So it's just a completely different deal. But when it comes to the level of care that they have for people, when it comes to what kind of teammates they are, when it comes to what kind of work ethic that they have, um, when it comes to not taking themselves too serious, on the basketball floor and engaging themselves to teammate. Now taking themselves serious as basketball players, but not taking themselves too serious as star players when it comes to their teammates, which is by far the most important thing. And then being coachable, right? Then being coachable. We had a lot of tough days with Dwayne Wade too. Just nobody saw him because it, nobody really knew about him, especially that first year that he sat out. There were a lot of tough days, but those are the days that shaped him and we had him for three years. So it's just different, but uh, because of Dwayne's interest level in, in me and in us and in Anthony and in the business side of it, because Dwayne obviously has got a huge part of where he's at with shoes and is, is going to be able to do whatever he wants in the NBA, whether it's ownership, uh, management, whatever he wants to do, there's a special interest. So anytime that he could pick things up on television or anytime that he could pick things up watching game tape, he would point that out. And he's done it with other guys. And I think that's, that's one of the beauties of, of what we have, you know, in, in, in our relationships. And uh, a lot of schools are always talking about, well, pro this and pro that. And I've got this guy and I've got that guy. Well, that's great. But if they're not really helping you make your team better, then it becomes, it's, it's not as great. And Dwayne has been the proponent from the beginning. And this has been so big for us. Uh, whether we were at Marquette, whether we were at Indiana, or now at Georgia. Dwayne is the leader of the family. When you look at all the former players that have gone on, I, I, I can't name very many that he didn't reach out to on his own because, it all, because he knew that it was, we were all connected. Even though he never went to Indiana, he never went to Georgia, he knew we were all connected. And I would put Magic Johnson's like that at Michigan State, okay? And, and it didn't matter who the coach was, whether it was Judd Heathcote or Tom Izzo, he was going to dive into that, those relationships. We had a couple guys like that at Indiana, but not to the extent of what Dwayne Wade has done with me on that, of really, really caring about how those guys' futures go. And then, and then being able to help be a sounding board for them in the NBA. And uh, that's what it was. And I think Dwayne will continue to do that as, uh, as long as he can. And I think that's great. And then I guess just a quick follow-up, Coach. Obviously, Georgia had some tough losses last year. Um, can you just talk, talk about Anthony's resiliency? Because you guys were able to bounce back from some of your worst losses with some of your best wins, beating teams like Tennessee and Auburn by double digits. How, how much of that was Anthony, and how well does that play when he goes to a franchise like the, the Timberwolves that had such a poor record last year? Well, Scott Layden and I talked about that at length, and, and because – the difference between uh, Anthony and some other guys near the top of the board is Anthony went through and he could have made the other choices too, right? He could have gone to Europe. He could have, he could have sat it out, all those types of things. No, this guy not only stayed home, but he went through it, right? He went through it. He had to bounce back from tough, tough days. He had to bounce back uh, from tough games. He had to come and bring it day after day. And, and, and then he had to be, you know, when there were good games, he had to know, turn around, no, no, we're not taking tomorrow off. We're not, we're not just walking through for 20 minutes, all right, and hanging out and getting a massage. Then, no, we're going to practice. So, like, he's been through the rigors of it and at the age of 18. And I think that really helps him because, obviously, the NBA season is going to be longer and there's going to be way more games. But he's, but he's not going to have to walk in and not have any idea how to practice hard after a game or have any idea how to put back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back practices together. He's not going to – that's there for him, right? And, 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 and then it's up to the coaching staff to find the best way to utilize that, to get the most out of them. And, and Ryan and I will talk about that when we visit. But the bottom line is he loves the game. He loves to get better. He learned a lot about what it takes to be a worker on a team and not just a guy that works really hard on his own. 
and how to bring the most out of his teammates. And that, and that's what I'm proud of him for, because um, it was tough. I mean, there, there, there weren't as many lanes. We shot 28% from three in the league. We shot 30% overall that, and we missed some open threes. I mean, he had to do a lot of different things, scoring wise, driving wise. I think this will go back to Darren's question about what will people be surprised on? I think the basketball part, they'll be surprised on is how good a passer that he is. And when they see that level, you know, over, over the next few years, and when they see where that happens. And as long as everybody remembers that it's a, it's, it's a marathon and not a sprint here with a kid like this, that, that, that's 19 and, and going to play the entire season at 19, I think it'll all be fine. But, but he's, he's resilient in the fact that he learned day after day, we weren't backing down, we weren't backing off, and this is what it's going to take for you to be successful. And he, and he responded to that. He embraced it. 